I know you think Ferrari and you immediately conjure images of big V8s or V12 engines and a scenery shaking exhaust bark every time you fire them up, but like the 296 GTB, this one doesn't have any of those things. In fact, this 296 GTS doesn't so much explode into life as it does kind of whir gently as if you've just switched on a photocopier. I'll show you what I mean. Did you hear that? Exactly. And yet people I trust tell me this might just be the best Ferrari to have ever worn the badge. So I guess we better go see what this plug-in prancing horse is all about then. Okay, hold your breath for just a moment. The 296 GTS listed $668,146, which is a sizable jump over the hardtop GTB, which is more like $551,800. But what price a little open air freedom? What you do get for that investment though is what might be Ferrari's most high-tech offering to date, with a plug-in hybrid system delivering potent performance rather than a really usable EV driving range, mega capable carbon ceramic brakes, and an almost telepathic six-way chassis dynamic sensor designed to link the car's key functions to make the experience and the driver somehow better. Elsewhere, there's 20 inch alloys, keyless entry, and the engine start button on the steering wheel. Wireless smartphone charging and Apple CarPlay are both standard in Australia with the latter controlled through the digital driver display. It's hard not to swoon when you gaze upon the 296 GTS. And I say that with no bias, I don't actually think all Ferraris have looked this good. But this 296 is the brand at its sweeping, dreamy best from its tarmac kissing front end, which generates so much cooling and downforce and negates the need for active aero, to the swollen haunches, to the glass engine cover. There is, however, a charging port there at the back, which is pretty novel for Ferrari and allows you to plug in and recharge. What makes this a 296 GTS though, rather than a GTB, is this, the ability to open the roof, getting some wind in your hair and that exhaust note deep, deep into your soul. However, I'm being totally honest with you, I think it looks better with the roof up. So the cabin of the 296 GTS gives you that kind of cockpit feel, which I love. And there are certain things I really like about it and a couple of things I'm not so in love with. But let's start with this steering wheel, which might just be one of the best in existence. It feels magical under the touch, as do these giant flappy paddles, which remain fixed in place when you turn the wheel. Now there is a huge amount of tech on offering the car, but all of it is controlled from the steering wheel, which is a pretty fiddly and convoluted way to get things to happen in the car, if I'm being totally honest with you. Plus there are a huge amount of switches and toggles it's as complicated as an f1 steering wheel and it takes a bit of time to get your head around i do love these leather wrapped sports seats so they've proven really comfy even on longer distance cruises and the whole cabin is a really lovely well stitched together premium feeling space and in this spec even the passenger gets a little screen so they can control things for the driver things like navigation input stuff like that meaning the driver can keep their eyes on the road and their fingers off all of these buttons Okay, you really want to know about practicality? Fine. It's got two seats, about 200 litres of storage up front, and a couple of hidey holes in the cabin, including behind the seats. And really, that's about it. Next question, please. Now the powertrain on offer here is both terrific, but a little bit terrifying, pairing a twin turbocharged 3 litre V6 with a rear mounted electric motor and a 7.45 kilowatt hour battery to deliver a total 610 kilowatts and 740 newton meters, which it feeds to an eight speed dual clutch automatic. Now those numbers frankly are staggering and they're enough, says Ferrari, to push this car to 100 kilometers an hour in just 2.9 seconds. Now, as well as allowing the 296 to start up silently and slink off into the distance, the car's little battery will unlock a 25 kilometer EV only driving range and contribute to the overall efficiency of just 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers on the combined cycle. Now, when it comes time to plug in, the 296 is AC power only, and the brand reckons it'll take about 90 minutes to go from empty to charged using an 11 kilowatt charger, but of course it will take a little bit longer using a seven kilowatt wall box at home. Okay, so remember how I told you you can start this 296 GTS silently thanks to its electric motor? Well, you can actually drive it like that as well, but it does pose the question, who would want to? So happily you can shortcut that by these little buttons on the steering wheel, which unlock the full note of that exhaust. And I can tell you it doesn't sound like a V6, it sounds like an absolute monster is growling behind my head. And I absolutely love it. So yes, of course, because of the GTS, we could be doing this with the top down, give you some of that wind in the hair experience, but I reckon you might have a little bit of trouble hearing me. So we're gonna shoot this bit with the top up. You'll just have to use your imagination, I'm afraid. 
And I will get to the powertrain on board here in just a moment because it is an absolute peach. But actually, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the steering. So generally speaking, when a car company wants to sharpen up the steering, they risk making it feel darty and uncomfortable when you're cruising, like even the littlest inputs drag you off course. But somehow this 296 doesn't do that. It feels really comfortable when you're cruising, but when you get to a road like this, it is just so direct, but so natural feeling. It's like there's this really intimate relationship between man and machine. I absolutely love it. It might be some of the best steering I've ever experienced. And speaking of things I like, surprisingly, I also love the ride in this car. It's taken me about an hour to get here today, and we've traveled through suburbia, along freeways, through tunnels, and along endless expansion joints. And actually, the 296 has been really comfortable the entire time. It's quite surprising how supple the ride is, even on Sydney's typically dodgy road surfaces, because again, when you get to a road like this, it just sits and grips so beautifully. There's absolutely no movement in the body, no float, it just picks a line and it goes. Now, of course, there's no shortage of power in this car, no matter what mode you're in, but I've been told to unlock maximum acceleration. I need to engage qualifying mode, which I do by hitting this little button on the steering wheel here. Qualifying comes up on the dash, and that unlocks all the grunt from the electric motor and the petrol engine combined, but also unlocks that 2.9 second zero to 100 time. And we're just at a rolling start here, traveling at 50 kilometers an hour, fourth gear. You put your foot down, and my God, does the 296 pounce forward. It is both terrifying and exhilarating all at once. I absolutely adore this car. There's really no other way to put it. If this feels like a rolling love letter to this Ferrari, well then good, because that is my intention. Despite it being such a high-tech vehicle in the Ferrari range, it still feels so natural, so intuitive, and such a joy to drive. It really is a peach. Now we are on a public road and not a racetrack, so obviously we are keeping things well within the legal limit, but I can tell you the cool thing about this is that it really is a joy to drive, even at the posted speed limit. It turns every trip into theatre, into something memorable, and I think probably that's what a supercar should do, right? If electrification is Ferrari's future, and in fact, the future of all supercars, then I am all about it. This hasn't hindered the Ferrari experience, it has helped it. This gearbox is so clever, even just in full automatic mode, not touching the flappy paddles, it seems to know exactly when to shift down on the approach to the corner, when to hold a gear for longer, when to shift up, it really is super clever. So breaking into this corner, it's chosen to go down to second, it'll hold that through to the other side and only shift up on the exit. It is really a clever, clever eight-speed box. Not much chance of the 296 GTS getting crash tested in Australia. You'd be able to hear the Italians weeping from across the ocean. You do, however, get front and side airbags, parking sensors, a reversing camera, auto high beam and tire pressure monitoring as standard. Standard is a three-year warranty, but you can extend that for up to five years. Then, if your car has less than 90,000 kilometers on the clock, you can opt into the new Power 15, which gives you up to 15 years total warranty coverage and is fully transferable. Silent but deadly, at least on startup, the 296 GTS continues a new era of smaller engines and electrified power for the prancing horse, and I, for one, am right on board. This thing puts the super in supercar. It is a joy to look at and to drive, and the sort of vehicle that turns every moment into a momentous occasion. Now, remember, to read my full review on this car and thousands of others, head to carsguide.com.au.